1892, withdrawal of the Moorish mission, Tangier, July 18th. Sir Charles Ian Smith has withdrawn his mission from Fez. Further negotiations have become impossible. On the 5th, the Sultan issued final orders that the treaty concluded between the British minister and His Majesty after eight weeks' negotiation should be signed the next day. This, however, was not done, and later, for some unaccountable reason, the Sultan refused to negotiate any treaty to all except one drawn on his own lines, in which he offered Sir Charles a bribe of 30000 to sign. The inevitable result has been the British minister has withdrawn the mission. It is now known that the only proposal made by the British minister was for the conclusion of a commercial treaty to be enjoyed equally by all nations. This demand was supported by the representatives of Germany, Austria, Spain, Italy, and Belgium, and the action of the Moorish government is attributed to French intrigue. Sir Charles had succeeded in negotiating a satisfactory commercial treaty with the Sultan at Fez. On examining the documents at the last minute prior to signature and sealing, Sir Charles, thanks to his perfect knowledge of Arabic, discovered that the words of some of the clauses had been altered in such a way to give certain advantages to Morocco. The Moorish Premier entreated Sir Charles to let the alteration stand and begged his acceptance of a number of valuable presents which he had brought with him, including bags of English gold amounting to no less than a hundred thousand notes, brothers and sisters. Sir Charles tore the treaty up, threw the pieces in the Prime Minister's face, and drove him from his presence with the most withering expressions of indignation at the insult of which the Moorish statesman and his master had rendered themselves guilty. He then rode off to the palace and had a most stormy interview with the sultan, who threatened to kill him, a menace not to be derided, since Fez is a hotbed of Moorish, religious, and nationalists, where foreigners of every kind are hated, and whether they rarely venture, and then only under the immediate protection of the sultan. Sir Charles, on receiving this threat, replied quietly, You can do so, but there will never again be a sultan of Morocco, and this is Sir Charles. Thereupon he announced his refusal to hold any further communication either with the sultan or with any of the ministers, spurned the emissaries sent by the sultan to entreat his forgiveness and to postpone his departure and left for Tangier in the face of great personal danger. Since there was hardly a man in Fez who did not know that there had been a complete breakdown between the British envoy and the sultan, on reaching Tangier he cabled to Lord Salisbury stating what had taken place, and recommended his own recall as an indication of England's displeasure at the indignity to which the envoy had been subjected. Sir Charles was recalled, but instead of being rewarded for the manner in which he had handled the situation, the only manner possible in the eyes of anyone possessed of the intimate acquaintance with the Orient, he was left for five years without employment, and although the Moorish mission is generally regarded as the stepping stone to a first caste legation in Europe, he was assigned to the post of minister resident at Bogota. The Moorish mission is generally regarded as the stepping stone to a first class legation in Europe. Had Sir Charles been a well-to-do man, he would have declined the post. For these small Central and South American republics are regarded by European diplomacy as the botany bay of the service, and many of the Secretary of Legation, English and Continental, who has preferred to remain on as such in some European capitals rather than accept promotion to the rank of minister in such place as Bogota or Carcasses. And this is the same thing I was hearing about the T.E. Lawrence. And that has to do with this Moorish mission. Sir Charles remains at Bogota for a couple of years and then retired. He was a most distinguished public servant and gallant soldier of whom the University of Oxford. What a coinky dink. Speaking about Oxford, T.E. Lawrence went to Oxford as well. And he was involved in this Moorish mission. And he did a thesis in Oxford in regards to the castles of the Crusades. So he knew all about the colonization of the Moors and everything. But the British put him in as a spy to go into the Moorish Empire and try to get him to sell out. And he accepted and had Moors come in to fight against the few. The British would contact Lawrence, T.E. Lawrence, Lawrence of Arabia, but his real nomin was Thomas Chapman. And he was a spy, right? 
So the British would hit them up and say, look, we got the canal on lock over here, but these Moors are getting ready to take it over. So go get your Moors together and go take them out because they was trying to take out all the main canals throughout the whole world. So T. E. Lawrence would go get those moors together and they go take out the few that's trying to get their canals and all that stuff back. So then the British supposed to give them gold coins, right? But the British don't give them the amount they're supposed to get. So what do they do? They go start tearing up the Mecca Railway and all this stuff because Britain didn't give them all their golden coins, which shows that, that, that he did take coins from the British who was colonizing the Moorish Empire. So when it said T. E. Lawrence started up a group of Moors to fight against the Byzantine Empire, and then they say the Turks or whatever like that, man, they're talking about they was taking out the few, calling them national fanatics and all this craziness, man. So T.E. Lawrence, which leads me to the Moorish Orthodox Church, man. We ain't even started this yet, brothers. We ain't even started this demonstration yet. This ties me into the Moorish Orthodox Church, man. They have the pictures up of a pale man named Fasil Ali, who is in direct communication with T.E. Lawrence. So they're spies. <laughs> Damn. The best example is they would go around Moors and live with them and learn everything they had. Just like me. Moors trust me, right? But then I'm a spy, you know what I'm saying? And y'all don't know, but I, it's my job to learn everything. And that's what T.E. Lawrence was doing. Fasil Ali's doing. That's what the Moorish Orthodox Church was doing. Because they directly have images of these people. Probably even T.E. Lawrence. But they were spies. They was me, but a spy. And just think if... Just think if I wanted to do that, man. I know I know all kinds of stuff, man, I could give information about to help them do all kinds of different loops and stuff. That's what they did. But Denimel went and made a public declaration saying that their church was abolished because he was writing these poems about little children. The, whatever claimed authority was extinguished. That's what Denimel said. And me being me, you know, I, I must enforce Ali's law. So what did I do? I went on their platform, I took the little video that Denimel, his declaration that he put up, and I posted it right on their, face page, on their Facebook. Then all, here come all the European members of the Morris Orthodox Church. Who, the, who, who this guy think he is? He can't tell us nothing about our church, and these people have no idea the, the so-called establishment about the church with having to get authority from some Moors. So who exactly was these Moors? Because we have Moors that are directly in contact with those that was taking gold coins from the British. Right in their face. The Sultan standing right in front of the Moor. And he's trying to give and beg another nation to go into treaty with them. That's what I'm saying, man. They would place certain Sultans in seats and appoint them to make treaties to fuck you, brothers and sisters. If T.E. Lawrence was around that Sultan and more that was offering, offering 100000 to make a treaty, they would have loved them. But Sir Charles seen that as disrespectful. So he really didn't even sell out and he had a chance to. They said the Sultan and them changed up the agreement. And the Sir Charles said he just wanted, you know, f commerce for all nations. That's equal in the eyes of law, correct? I mean, at least they was asking, though. They was asking, at least. This just means that Peter Lamborn and all them, they knew about the infiltration of the Moorish mission and all that. But Noble Drew Ali said he had spies, too. That's what I feel about the Moors. They feel like if you like it, I love it because they created everything. So you want to get wherever you want to go, we can go. So, like, whoever was talking slick about the Moors in the Moorish Orthodox Church comments... I'd like go on a post, right? And then you see posts where they're like pretty fly for a white guy and just dumb ass shit, man. They have no sense of any color of law. I found some real potent. It was like from the 1700s, late 1700s, speaking about de facto and color of law. And it speaks about how tribunals, if it's a state court, it's a de facto court. It's under color of law and you can't use a habeas corpus or nothing because you got to claim color of law to go into a United States court. All this stuff, man, just correlates with what the Moors have always said. But United States court ain't nothing e either because they de facto too. So they just running you and running you, man. But they made, I got Supreme Court case law saying that too, that the state courts are um, de facto and the habeas corpus cannot be used. You have to go to uh, United States court if you feel you under color of law. 
And you can do that anyway. They railroad your ass today anyway. But we got the proof that at least there was some Europeans back in the days that was kind of standing on it, which proves they're not honoring their foremothers and forefathers. So may Allah smash them. <laughs> they said one of the men, one of the men said, if you make this bill, it's going to aggravate the thought of slavery within Congress. Because everybody will be getting up out of the state courts and trying to go to the U.S. You know what I mean? He was like, you're going to aggravate the Congress with this. Like they didn't want to be bothered with the slavery they're doing through the state courts. Man. Islam, brothers, sisters. So I'm sorry, but Islam, I get active. I get I get full of zeal of wrath for justice because I sit in love, truth, peace, give them freedom. And they still just violate brothers, sisters. I hope some of you go further into the Moorish mission because my mind can only spool and spin so, so much, brothers, sisters. Y'all say I'm pale. You know what I'm saying? And I don't have that measure. But Moors, I ask that you go in further, man, and find some more of this stuff out because there was traitor Moors like we have where it said that the, fir the first three that started with T.E. Lawrence was those three where I showed the brother with his hand on his heart and his foot on his rock. So I don't know what's going on with that. Then we have the Moorish mission image where he's sitting with his legs crossed like Noble Drali. But you have to watch because these images will look like he has his left hand when it's a, actually a negative. You got to watch the negatives of the photos and stuff, brothers and sisters. But I don't get it, man. They was doing the Moorish mission, but they was sellouts taking finance. The one in the very back image with, with the Moor with his hand on his heart, the European next to him, that's who snatched up the Sultan when he tried to sell out 10 years later. So let's hit the conclusion. The T.E. Lawrence, they made a movie in like 65 about it. It's called Lawrence of Arabia. It got seven awards for it. You know what I'm saying? But basically, he went to try to get the Moors and find out which ones would sell out and then hit up the British and was like, go ahead and start sending some gold because they was ready to sell out. Because even when old boy was there trying to just get a commerce treaty, they was trying to give him 100 grand to bring his troops to do all kinds of craziness, man. No, Ali said if two or more Europeans go off and do something, they're going to tear it up. And that's why I stated myself. That's my law from Ali. If two or more Europeans go, that's my hadith. That's my oral state, my hadith. If two or more Europeans go off and do something, they're going to tear it up. So stay to yourself, Islam. We could talk it over, but I ain't standing next to no traitors, and that's indeed, brother. Seven times. We can talk it over, but I ain't standing next to Drew Ali video holders, not giving full disclosure. In the temple screaming hallelujah, knowing it's a lot of truth. It's far harder to say, try to make the movement useless. In the wild, fruitless, so they can mute this. The youth is clueless, clueless. Yo. I ever tell you, I've been struck with lightning seven times. We can talk it over, but I ain't standing next to no traitors, and that's indeed, brother. Struck for seven times. Ra claiming the grand body. Hurry, hit the crack pipe outside the temple lobbies. Ungodly. Look at Roswell, overweight like a whale. Treats the temple like Roswell, won't even accept mail. Mommy celebrating anniversaries of switching sides. Violate the creed, you get curried or deep fried. I ever tell you, I've been struck by lightning seven times.